Okay, got it. All right. We're ready to go. Okay. Good morning, everyone. I'm sorry if my, my computer's not acting very kindly toward me today. Uh, but anyway, it's uh, 9.04, I believe, and I would like to call to order the meeting of the Government Affairs and Public Information Committee on uh, this day, Friday, October 28, 2022. Before we begin, please note this meeting is live streamed on YouTube and recorded. Members of the public are encouraged to watch and listen to the meeting online or by dialing into 415-569-6446 with the audio of this meeting. If you would like to provide public comment at today's meeting, and if you would, and if you have not done so already, please call uh, 415-569-6446 and let the facilitator know uh, what items you would like to speak on today. Madam Secretary, please begin by calling the roll. Thank you. Good morning again, everyone. Uh, Director Garbarino. Here. Director Judice is absent. Director Hernandez is absent. Director Hill. Present. Director Rodoni. Present. Director Stephanie is absent. Vice Chair Snyder. Here. Chair Cochran. Here. And President Terio. Here. Thank you. You have a quorum. Also on the line, you have Directors Grosbel, Mastin, and Fear. Um, you are not a committee of the whole, but I'll keep watching that in the event another director joins. You are right at nine. I'll confirm staff. Dennis Mulligan. Here. Joe Wire. Yes. Ava Barr Furbrish. There we go. I see you there. Uh, Kim Manolius. Morning. Thank you. Madeline Chen. Good morning. Good morning. Dave Rivera. Good morning, President. Mona Babauta. Good morning. Jim Swindler. I see Jim's there. Thank you. Oh. I'm sorry, present. Thank you. And Kelly Hopper. Present. Thank you. That confirms staff on the line. With us today also is Bo Beeler from Platinum Advisors, as well as Steve Wallach. So I'll turn it back to you, Chair. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you. I would like to remind everyone to mute their microphone until after staff's presentation. And remember to unmute when you, we open up for director's discussion. Uh, if we have directors joining us by phone, please use their mute button or star six to unmute yourself. After staff presentation, I will be asking for any questions or comments on the item. Click on the raise hand function if you have a question or press star nine if you join by phone. If there are any questions, the secretary, I will call on you accordingly. In, in this case, it'll be the secretary because I can't see anything. Uh, if, if we miss your raise hand, please speak up. Uh, after our discussion, we will ask for any public comment before moving on. Please follow along by referring to the page number located at the top right-hand corner of your meeting package. Uh, in this case, uh, uh, it's Bo's uh, presentation. After the discussion portion, we will ask any public comment before moving on. Please follow along by reference to the page located at the top right-hand corner of your meeting packet. We will begin uh, with item number three on the agenda, uh, which is a state update from the District Legislative Advocate Platinum Advisor LLC. The staff report begins on page three of your packet, and we will have Bo Beeler of Platinum Advisors on the line to present the report. Bo, go ahead and start your presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chair, directors. Um, <clears throat> it's Bo Beeler, Steve Wallach is also on the line from Platinum. Uh, pleased to see you all this morning. I figured I'd start with a, a bit of a prologue, uh, given it's election season, uh, you can't really miss it. Although it turns out, since I'm a high propensity voter, along with my wife, we've had a very limited amount of mail, given that we're not in a targeted district. But for those around the state that are in targeted spots, I'm sure your mailboxes are filling up, just like the old days when we didn't have 
Twitter and social media and everything else to get the vote out. Always exciting times. Uh, but I think what's interesting, uh, and I'm going to just dig into a little bit of the elections before Steve gets into the meat of the, uh, sorry, Jerry. Before Steve digs into the meat of, of the policy issues going on in Sacramento, I think it's it's critical to the district in the delegation. You know, you've got some, we've got 30 up to 33, depending on how you want to count it, new members coming in to the legislature in, in the assembly and the Senate. Uh, you've got that race there just to the north end of the bridge to replace Mark Levine. Uh, it looks to me as I view that one, you have a, a Democrat on Democrat situation. You've got endorsements of heavy hitters on both sides, pretty well financed on both sides. I don't really have any forecast there, uh, nor would I want to make one. But, uh, but suffice it to say, you'll have a new member with um, you know upwards of 12 years to serve within the delegation. And uh, the reason I mention that is that uh, with 33 new members, uh, we've got a lot of people to talk to, to indoctrinate into the ways of the bridge and the things that are important to the district. So there's gonna be a, a lot of work ahead, not just with the delegation, but around the state to remind them uh, what we're all about. And I think that's uh, that's important. I could go deeper into more, th more of the elections, but I'll save that a little bit after uh, Steve gets done with our policy report. Uh, one other thing I did want to mention, though, you know, Phil Ting has been a, uh, a friend or a, let's just say an open door for the bridge over the years, but he's going to term out in 24. And then you look at uh, uh, Dodd has been a good friend in the Senate and he's going to be terming out soon. So we're going to start losing uh, some of the folks from the delegation that we've had time. McGuire, who's always been available for us, signed letters, really, uh, uh, a bit of friend, I think. So we're going to see some changes, and uh, and it's uh, times are changing. But I can go deeper into all that stuff. I will just say quickly before I transition over to Steve that on our uh, we went on the caucus delegation trip with some legislators over to Ireland. I heard that at the beginning of the of the talk here. So if you need to know, uh, Michal Smith, he's uh, now been assigned to California. It's the general counsel of Ireland. And has become a, a friend of our office. So uh, I have his card here if you need to get a hold of him. Mm -hmm. Steve, as they say on the, on the Conan podcast, take it away. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, I'll, I'll kind of do a brief overview of everything, and then we can maybe ask yeah, if anybody has any questions, we'll go into that at that time. Yeah, as both mentioned, you know, with the elections, we're going to have at least 33 members, new members coming in in December. The legislature is supposed to return first part of December for their organizational sessions. You know, it's going to be a little more hectic than normal. Uh, the governor has asked for a special session to be called in December as well to address the high gas prices. So with you know California's fuel prices being much higher than the rest of the country, which is normal to a certain extent, but they are exceedingly high. Um, you may have noticed if you get the governor's press releases, uh, it's been a regular uh, release at least a couple of week as the petroleum industry reports its earnings. Uh, he's putting out press releases showing how much, how much higher their profits have been this past quarter than in previous years. Some of them as much as I think like 1500% more as uh, trying to make his case that something needs to be done to rein in the prices in, in California. Whether this gets a pass uh, approved or not is to me still is uncertain. Um, a special session gives them a little you know, more flexibility in the votes and how things are, are passed, but uh, we'll see how that goes and whether, whether it even gets the votes that it needs to, to get out, which will be, a tax increase would require probably a two thirds vote. Um, other other things, you know, going into next year, you know, there's two two main issues. One is the fiscal outlook. You know, this year we had a record uh, budget surplus of almost hundred billion dollars. You know, next year's not going to be that. Um, we're looking right now at a, a, a small deficit. Um, not sure if it's going to grow or not as we move forward. Right now, it's about four point seven billion um, since my write up. It, it's gone up a little bit. Um, and that can easily be covered with the existing reserves. However, they aren't sure if this is going to grow in the future. You know, there's there was hope that the October October tax payments, which is which is the deadline to pay, you know, tax extensions would be much higher. It started out strong with a single day record of almost a billion dollars, but since then October just kind of has, has flattened out and not resulted in the revenue they were expecting. So, LAO's mid year fiscal outlook comes out this uh, in November. So. We, we do expect uh, budget uh, revenues going into next year be much uh, be lower than what's forecast. 
So we'll see you know, what, what that means for budgeting next year and, and, and some of the promises made in the budget this year. There, there's a lot of money that was in the budget that was promised to be appropriate in future years that may or may not materialize depending on the fiscal outlook. Um, you know, with that, you know, with the large surplus, we did try to work on trying to get money for the seismic phase three project for, for, for the Golden Gate Bridge. We, we have not given up on that yet. Um, we did, with the large surplus, try to um, had all our delegation members sign a letter requesting, you know, funding to be in the budget. Uh, they were very supportive and active in that, you know, but, you know, the leadership in both the Senate and the Assembly put a hard and fast rule saying no earmarks for transportation projects. They want transportation to be uh, bundled up into TERSIP and other uh, programmatic funding. So that didn't go forward. So we tried other approaches um, in trying to secure funding. You know, the settlement uh, Ting has been very helpful in that, as well as the governor's office in trying to work out a, a process going using the local bridge program. So the current rules for the bridge program kind of limit how much money we can get, but uh, we're hopefully we can change those rules going forward. So it's an ongoing process and I hope we'll, we'll be successful soon. Um, the other big thing coming up right, right now that was a late addition is uh, the COVID uh, state of emergency declaration by the governor is gonna sunset at the end of February. So he's given time for it's kind of like a, a, a winter spike uh, moving forward. Uh, but that also means these remote meetings for local agencies will come to an end as well. There was legislation that was enacted AB 2449, which provides some kind of uh, some flexibility for remote meetings. It does require you know, local governing bodies to have at least a quorum in a single location and other members can can use uh, you know, Zoom services to participate. It does have other restrictions in there. So it's going to be a cumbersome uh, uh, measure to use because it limits you're required to declare what your personal emergency is and also limits the number of times you can use it for each board member. So. We'll see how this works. It is a temporary uh, but um, flexibility with AB 2449. I think it would sunset um, into, on January 1st, 2026. So, you know, I think people have gotten used to these remote readings. I think they've been working well, um, but there's there's a large vocal group out there that prefers everybody to be in person. So I'm not going to go through all the bills on in the chart, but there are a few I kind of just wanted to point out that we worked on. Um, the main, main one was AB, where's it at? 2594 uh, by Summon Ting. This is regarding a uh, toll collection process. You know, we worked closely with him. His office, kind of, I think, kind of relied on a lot of guidance from the district in crafting this bill, kind of putting in statute practices. I think uh, the district already does regarding, you know, electronic toll payments and, and notices uh, that are given late, you know, late fees, what those puts caps on that and a bunch, bunch of other items. So uh, that bill was successful. 2622 Mullen, this is the extension of the sales tax exemption for zero emission buses. It will continue for a few more years. Um, it's not a, it's not a full exemption, but it, it does help um, in any case for, for trying to meet uh, CARB's new uh, for the zero emission transition rules. Um, SB 917, I'll just, we didn't have, we didn't take a position on this one. We did watch it, it did fail again. This is the seamless Bay Area proposal um, yeah. that moved, yeah. moved forward. So it, it, that, it finally was held on the assembly appropriation suspense file. I think mainly because not all the details had worked out. I mean, there were still significant amendments floating around at the time. And I think appropriations at that point just said, let's hold it until it's a final deal. Unclear whether uh, Senator Becker is gonna try this again next year or if they're just going to try to proceed using existing authority that MTC has to require uh, more coordination than the Bay Area. And then Senator Wiener's SB 922, this is another one that extends uh, sunset date on uh, CEQA exemptions for transit and uh, active transportation type projects. So uh, the other one, oh, one I want to just kind of point out, uh, SB 1121, basically a study bill, but these, these bills require the Transportation Commission to do assessments on a transportation system. They've been done in the past. What's uh, I think unique about this one, it includes transit. So not only does it transit service, but transit operations and what the funding needs are, are gonna need for public transit moving forward, which I think is a, a key change in prior, uh, you know, needs assessments that have been done in the past. So we'll continue to work with that. C CTC will work with Terrence as operators, Caltrans and others on working on that, that report. So. You, I'll, I'll leave it at that and see if anybody has any questions. 
You know, there was one other item there, too, that's uh, not on the list that I think is of interest. Um, you know, uh, O'Donnell had put in a bill at the behest of the Catalina Ferry. Uh, I forget the number on it, but it failed. Um, it turned into a 60 million or a 20 and a 40 million dollar allotment in the um, in one of the budget trailer bills that allows for um, commercial harbor craft uh, grants. I'm not sure they've sorted out through finance and whichever agency uh, would end up handing out the money, but uh, there's some language in there that uh, I'll forward along. Okay, Amaret, is, uh, is there anyone have, have their hand up? I can't see, so. Yes. We have Director Grosbel. Go ahead, Director Grosbel. Thank you. Uh, you know, I noticed that AB 2949 exempting veterans from um, from paying tolls or related fines, Will that does that apply to the bridge board also, as well as the state bridges? Yes, it does. Um, it does, it, it is, they try to narrow it as much as they could. Um, it's only for certain, they have to actually display those special license plates, like a Purple Heart license plate, a Pearl Harbor survivor license plate, those type of things, um, in order to receive the, the benefit of that exemption. Thank you. Any other questions by board members? I don't see any hands up currently. And I don't see any hands waving uh, in front of the cameras. <laughs> right. Well, Bo and Steve, uh, thank you very much for your presentation. Oh, hang on uh, a second. I, I just saw a wave. <laughs> Director Hill. <laughs> just, just quickly, and it's not necessarily to um, uh, to the question of the law is um, since we're having so much trouble getting the money for the uh, seismic retrofit, do we have a particular schedule by which we feel we need to have it for, for the eventual safety or is it something we're just going to have to ride on until we can get it? I, I mean, think that's a question for me. Yeah. Uh, yes. So the timing of it is we cannot legally award a construction contract unless we have all the funding lined up. Um, so we're working very aggressively on it. The district did apply for a $400 million grant from a new federal discretionary program uh, that was part of the bipartisan infrastructure law. We're real pleased that that new law that passed a year ago included this new program. Uh, and your staff and our consultant team were working uh, late last night to submit uh, responses to follow up questions on that $400 million grant request. We'll hear the response of whether or not we're successful in December. Then separately, as Steve alluded to or spoke to, we're seeking $300 million from the state. Assemblymember Ting and Governor Newsom are being very helpful. Uh, we've had meetings with the head of the State Department of Finance and the governor's staff to talk through some of the changes that we're seeking. And uh, we're cautiously optimistic that we'll wrap something up with that also, hopefully by the end of the year. Um, but the timeline is when Ava is ready to award a contract, we have some time to do that. Uh, but the moon and stars are aligned politically right now where it's the best time to uh, finalize this. Okay, thank you, Dennis. Appreciate it. I really appreciate the updates. Chair Cochran, okay. we have two more hands up, so I'm gonna call on Director Thier as the first hand. Thank you so much, Amaret. Um, I just had a quick question. You mentioned the 12th AD race, and I was wondering if there was any polling that you had seen that you could discuss. I have not seen any recent polling, most around Sacramento, and I'm one having run campaigns. I believe that the boots on the ground are the most uh, accurate reflection of what's really going on in a race. A lot of times we'll get the target book updates and who's raised the most money and where do the endorsements sit. I think that uh, Connolly, it's Connolly, I believe, isn't it? Yes, Connolly, I think he's looking a little bit ahead right now. But I would just call that one a, a, a toss up and I wouldn't rely too much on the Sacramento types. I'd look to the, the districts and how the field goes down there. I don't get to see the mailbox and those kind of things. Nope. That's all That's I think. Yeah. Okay, there was someone else, uh, Amaret? Yes, I believe Director Snyder had his hand up. Director Snyder? Yeah, yeah, it's that time of year, politics. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I was uh, to to Dennis. Is that was that the uh, the mega grant program that you're talking about, or is that a different a different one in addition to that? 
It's not MAGA. There's a special program just for bridges, which is good for us because okay. then the competition is smaller. Typically, federal programs are grossly oversubscribed where you have 100 right. bucks competing for one slot. So we're really pleased that um, the leadership in the House and Senate for the bipartisan infrastructure law included this new uh, discretionary bridge investment program. So it's separate from MAGA. It's a multi-year award, and it can be a larger award than MAGA. And didn't we apply for the MAGA grant too, or? No, we apply yeah. for the bridge investment program. Okay, uh, all right. Yeah, so we, we have That's all that in the basket. Okay. Um, no, because we did get a letter out. I just got, I got to get it too. And I was trying to get other folks to get letters. So, um, and any other anything on that? I mean, I don't know. If Plat this Plat Platinum's just mostly in Sacramento, Stephen. You guys, right? You guys aren't doing as much. That's correct. That. In, in Washington D.C., we have a separate form, uh, firm, uh, Thornhill, and Paul Schlesinger is our lobbyist in Washington D.C. Uh, okay. Paul, we worked with for many years to help us get the discretionary program in the bipartisan infrastructure law. And most noteworthy, he's who we worked with on Map 21 to insert language that said safety projects, including nets on bridges, are eligible for funding. That's great. Well, anything we can do, we can support. It was it was interesting. You guys got to meet with B. Gig, and I got to go back to D.C. a couple few weeks ago on another mega grant project. But we got to meet with Holly Trottenberg, and it was pretty neat. To, um, and they're really trying to get this stuff pushed out, I know, uh, quickly. Thank you, Director Snyder. We also have Director Parr with her hand up. So, I'm Director Parr. Thank you. I appreciate that. I, we had a fairly robust finance meeting yesterday where um, Joe laid out what he thinks the projections are for the next few years. And afterwards, I said to Dennis, well, that certainly puts in my mind in perspective of how important our grants and our, our uh, lobbying is. And so, um, listening to the fact about how tenuous right now the phase three is, I just wanna say thank you to Platinum and Associates. I know Chris, Director Snyder, uh, does a lot that we never see uh, to help us get money. The fact that the staff was um, up in the middle of the night last night working on answers to the federal program. I mean, it, it definitely is a, a village that supports us and keeps us solvent. And sometimes we don't um, shout out to how many people it takes to keep us functioning at the bridge and to keep people safe. For instance, and the seismic three is a perfect example. So thank you to all of you. Thank you for that, Barbara. Uh, is there anything else, uh, Madam Secretary? I see no other hands up. And I believe that concludes our, uh, we do have public comment with, that concludes our discussion for the director. So I'm going to ask, I believe David Pilpel, are you on the line? I am, can you hear me now? We can hear you, thank you. Go ahead. Excellent, David Pilp. David Pilpel, good morning. So on the state legislative update, I had uh, comments on four uh, areas, transportation funding, regional transit coordination, bridge toll practices, and public meeting uh, laws. Uh, I very much appreciated the uh, summary from uh, Platinum on uh, transportation funding. Um, both the, I heard the discussion, I get what you're doing on seismic, that's all to the good. Um, and TIRCP. I don't want to forget uh, TDA as a funding source um, for uh, bus and, and ferry, and periodically there's discussion about TDA uh, reform, and I think the district should be uh, involved in that in as much as, well, it's, it's just a basic uh, funding source for uh, transit and being involved with the, the three counties and the uh, Marin uh, issues and the Sonoma County split and the history on TDA, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, TDA, reform is important. That might also uh, relate to regional uh, transit coordination. I suspect that some version of SB 917 is coming back. I think the efforts that the district and the other operators have uh, made, uh, not under a mandate, but simply because it's the right thing to do, um, should get uh, credit. And to the extent that that involves some funding to do uh, more work and continue uh, backfilling uh, operating dollars that are going to uh, go away in a, a year, year and a half. Um, I think that's uh, important. So having a, a strategy going forward on 
uh, transit coordination in the region. Um, and, and I know the general manager has been involved in MTC and various others. Um, that's all to the good. On bridge toll practices, the general manager's report later today talks about uh, implementing the, the Ting bill, and I'm sure that'll come back uh, to the finance committee and to the board in the next few months, and it would be uh, good to know what the projection is of the uh, veteran uh, exemption. Um, and finally, on uh, public meeting laws, uh, yes, it's disappointing that there wasn't a bigger fix uh, for the Brown Act, but given that the elevator isn't going to be uh, fixed by February, I suspect um, there's going to have to be some arrangement made for uh, public meetings of this uh, uh, of the district going forward. Uh, and it would be nice to be able to continue some version of uh, remote or hybrid meetings uh, going forward. And that's not just a, a concern for the district, but for public agencies in the state. And I continue to uh, believe that not just following transportation issues in Sacramento, but also these other uh, things that affect the, the business and um, the, the district as a public agency is important. Um, hope that helps. Thank you very much for listening. Appreciate the report again. Thanks. Thank you, David. <clears throat> Anyone else, uh, Madam Secretary? We have no other speakers. All right. Well, that uh, concludes our, uh, or we've reached the end of our agenda then. And so I will, Accept a motion to adjourn this meeting. Someone willing to do that? I see Director Hill raised his hand and Director he Parr did. has raised her hand. Yep. Good, good. Uh, apparently, then we're all done with no objections. That concludes the meeting of the Government Affairs and Public Information Committee. The time is 9.